church yet advocates for this annulment. Oh, Your Majesty, I'm so ashamed. You must know I do not share my husband's view. Elizabeth, you have always been a loyal friend. This is wrong. Look what they are doing to you. Oh, not to me, to him. I fear for his immortal soul. I much admire your forbearance. How do you not get angry? I am enraged at my husband's treatment of me, flaunting his whore in front of me and my household. I cannot tolerate it. But you must. If he breaks his marriage vow, it is up to you to stay strong, loving, and loyal. Through your forgiveness, he shall see the error of his way and come back to you. No, if only I could be sure. But none of us can be sure. We can only put our faith in God and endure with the love from our friends. And to that purpose, I have another letter. Can you take it to the papal emissary? Of course. I will do anything to aid your cause. It is righteous. But leave me in peace, and remember where your loyalties lie. You are the Duchess of Norfolk. Anne Boleyn is my niece, and soon will be queen. There is only one queen of England, and that is Catherine. I will never be moved. I know where my loyalties lie. Wife. This won't end well. I didn't start it. It will be what it will be, Thomas. Now I must run an errand for the queen. By your leave, my lord. Thank <laughs> you. 
be in your rag and visit my apartment. Madam, do not chide or I shall leave at once. I am paying a curtain. <laughs> well, I wish I knew where to expect you. I have been doing some fine embroidery on your shirt and ways to give them to you. No need to do that. Oh, a wife does such things for her husband. Catherine, you have no cause for complaint. You, you are mistress of your own household and may do as you please. I have not visited you, for I have been I have been engaged in affairs of government. Of government. Yes! <laughs> Woolsey has left things in disarray. And as far as visiting your apartments or your bed, you should know that we are not legally married, as numerous doctors, including my almoner, Dr. Lee, shall maintain. Doctors! Without the help of doctors, you know perfectly well that the alleged cause for this divorce does not exist. And as for Dr. Lee, I care not a straw. He is not my judge in this case. It is for the Pope to decide. And as for all the others, you know very well that the very best lawyers are written in my favor. Indeed, if you would give me leave to procure counsel's opinion, I do not hesitate to say that for each doctor or lawyer you may find to decide in your favor, I shall find 1,000 to declare our marriage good and indissoluble. Madam, the opinions we are collecting are so weighty the decision must go in our favor. And if it does not, we shall declare the Pope a heretic and marry whom we please.
My ears do ache. <laughs> but it shall pass. <laughs> You know, well, see, when I was a small boy, I wanted to join a religious order, <laughs> a career in the church. <laughs> it would have been quiet. <laughs> I don't know if it would have been quiet, Your Majesty, but it would have been different. <laughs> you know, Thomas, they tell me that you are not to be trusted. But I trust you. <laughs> I will give you no cause to ever doubt that trust, Your Majesty. I am a loyal servant. You will get your annulment. This strife will soon be over. <laughs> Have a drink in my chamber, my friend. <laughs> the end is near. The cardinal will try and fail. The king will one day get his annulment. Anne Boleyn will be queen. Do be careful what you wish for. 